thankful to have each and every one here. Do ask an interest in your prayers as I stand before you. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you and like to turn with me, please turn with me up to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, and we'll begin with verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? With a question mark. And he said unto you, It is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. He starts to describe this parable. Before I want to get into the next portion of this, uh, I want us to look at what has been delivered to us. Notice I put in verse in there verse 11 where it says, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. I want you to think about this, that, you know, that this seed, the word of God, has, has been uh, freely given. It's, it's been scattered out abroad. Now the sower, you know, has sown that seed uh that seed has been scattered there in certain areas. And I want you to think about that when a farmer or somebody that is sowing seed, that there is a, there is a great scattering of that seed and how liberal that you sow that seed is how, uh, hey, better chances that that seed is going to take and be able to come forward. Do you see what I'm saying? You take that seed and you throw it out there, sometimes it's going to uh, land. Some will bounce and some will land upon uh, the waysides and different places that people, hey, they hear it and they think, oh, wow, wonderful, they hear it um, and understand part of it. But, hey, there's uh, birds of the air that come and take on that seed and eat that seed. And they try and instill the word of God, the gospel that has been proclaimed and delivered unto God's people, and try and, and, and rob them of that uh, that has been delivered unto them. But I want you to think, I don't know if you've ever uh, sown a yard and, and scattered uh, seed in a yard. You think about how much seed... Uh, might go bouncing off of the driveway or on the curb or into the road as you're scattering that seed. But if you want to get that that's up close to the curb, you're going to have to scatter liberal enough that uh, enough is going to get it covered just as much as in the center of the yard. And some of that is going to be on the road. But I want you to think about this. The, those that don't and they scatter it just in the center of the yard. For some reason, you'll see right around the edges, there's not much seed that takes. And there's also some different scenarios, and I say this from experience, that when, when I have a, I pay a guy to come and spray the yard and take care of the yard and he's, he, he puts down treatment. But where the closest to the pavement, based on the heat, based on the pavement, based on the water that runs off that pavement, can and change how the, that ground takes the treatment on that yard. The same way, brothers and sisters, in when we are sowing something, how well is the ground, how well is everything that has been prepared to receive uh, that seed. I want you to think about that. Now, I'm not saying when I say receive that seed as 
it's an Armenian saying, hey, you need to receive God into your heart. That's not what I'm saying. So don't take, take that there. I'm just saying be receptive of what you're receiving. You're receiving and hearing today the word of God and hearing what God has blessed you to have. But notice, go back up here. I want you to look at, at the verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. That was their ground uh, that was prepared for that seed. Uh, I want you to think about that. Was the ground prepared for that seed? Now, um, you think about how you prepare yourself in this life in receiving and hearing and understanding what God has blessed you to understand what he's blessed you to have in the New Testament church. Do you prepare and make preparations before you come into the house of God? And I want you to think about that. Are you praying through the week, God help me be able to hear uh, the gospel preached this weekend, praying for your pastor that God will bless him with the message that you need that day? Because guess what? If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit and, and, and that ministry of the gospel is going to be led by the Holy Spirit, God will put impressions on his mind uh, to bless him and help him to be able to preach in a way uh, that will be uh, edifying unto the church. Now, it may not be what we want. You see what I'm saying? You know, <clears throat> when you go and you give things to your children throughout the week and you're taking care of your children and you're making meals for them and preparing meals, you are making preparations of meals and things that they need that they necessarily don't want. You understand that? That's just the, that's the fact of it. Us as children of God, God being the Heavenly Father, there are things that we necessarily in our human nature do not want and do not desire that of our, our human nature. But as Elder Steve uh, uh, mentioned so ably at the uh, Gulf Coast Fellowship, he said, hey, one of the things you've got to understand when a sacrifice is made, when the Bible teaches us to crucify the flesh and to take up our cross and follow him, that in those Old Testament sacrifices, that when they took those animals and the flesh was burned off, the flesh was completely burned off, which typified of how we were to sacrifice ourselves our own wants, our own desires, our own flesh, our own whatever it is, take that off and, and, and cast it aside and take up our cross, that our daily sacrifice, and follow after the things of the Lord. And that's some making preparations in this walk, this life that we have today. Now how often have we made preparations and coming forward uh, coming into the house of God, praying that God will richly bless us to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, how often have you done that? Uh, today, I'm uh, telling you what, a lot of people come into the churches across America today, maybe uh, overseas, they say that they're more receptive and more appreciative of the gospel being preached overseas than they are in America but I think that God has a great work here, honestly. But I'm telling you what, there is a great deal of, of God's people meeting today that there hasn't been a prayer that has gone up throughout the whole week until they get here to the house of God. And they're sitting here, and they're, and they're sitting in the congregation, and then they start praying then, Lord bless him. Let me ask you just a, a, uh, a question, a simple question. Do you think that that is making preparation? Do you think that's making any kind of preparation whatsoever? You think about going to a job or you have a particular job and you've got preparations that you have to make for that day coming up You've got preparations that you have to make 
you have things you have to do to get ready for your job. If you go in unprepared, if you show up late, I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's not going to be good. But how often have we honestly made preparations as children of God when it comes to understanding the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth and understanding what the truth is about? In America today, people don't want to understand the truth. They want to just be given everything and everything laid out on a silver platter for them. Because they, we're in a, a, a country of prosperity to the point that the prosperity has spoiled us to the point that hey, we don't understand what God has blessed us to have here. You know, the Bible teaches where two or three are gathered in my name. There will I be among them. I want you to think about this. If I didn't quote it just exactly right, forgive me. That, uh, that's the feebleness of this old flesh. But understand what I'm saying here. Where two or three are gathered in my name. I like what was said there. It's not based upon the building. It's based upon God's people worshiping in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. If you're going to be in spirit, you've got to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves and also in truth. It's not based upon, hey, what we think God's word says. It's not based upon what we uh, claim is the word of God when it's really not. And it's not a KJV uh, Bible, the English tongue uh, <coughs> Bible. We need a KJV Bible to use. Uh, but, you know, it's not a based upon what we want to think. It's not based upon our own abilities. It's not based upon our own actions. Hey, it's based upon what God's Word, thus saith the Word of God, tells us it's based on. Amen. And what Jesus Christ has established. Jesus Christ, as the cornerstone, the solid rock, the foundation of the New Testament church. And you say, well, uh, my old brother and cousin and such and such that I've uh, been so close to all these years back, uh, they believe in God. Well, believing in God just isn't everything. You've got to worship in spirit and in truth for a reason. And that reason is for this. Because that's what God tells us. Simple as that. Word the Lord tells us you must, you must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, to make that preparation, you have to make those preparations by hey, understanding the truth, desiring the truth, uh, seeking the truth, uh, reading the truth. Uh, desiring it and praying, God help help me understand what it is that Thy Word teaches. Help me be able to hear uh, the gospel proclaimed. Help me be able to take it uh, here uh, day to day and be able to live after Thy Word. Uh, help me be able to be praying uh, for the message that You have for me to have uh, this day. Uh, because guess what? When you hear the gospel being preached. That is spiritual food that you're being given. That's spiritual food for the child of graves. That's how you live. That's how you uh, are being able to be fed spiritually uh, by hearing the preached gospel. If you ever get to a point that the preaching of the gospel, you don't feel like you're being fed, uh, that you don't enjoy the preaching of the gospel, that you need your ears itched. Uh, you've got problems, I say. Get home, get on your knees, humble yourself before the mighty hands of God and get on your knees and pray that God will help you and strengthen you and him and help God to direct your mind uh, that you might be looking upon the things of God instead of your own will, your own desires and, and help you crucify that old flesh. And some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture, it says. How much moisture? You go up on the stone mountain, you'll find where 
There'll be places where there's a little divots on the rock and dirt has collected out there. And the moisture has come and it's wet and there's things that had grown up out of that rock. Uh, you'll find that there's trees, you'll see it in, in the top of uh, gutters. You'll see where dirt had collected there in gutters. And then the heat of the summer comes. And when that heat comes, it starts cooking. It starts drying it out. It starts making it to where there's no more moisture. There's not much rain. And that tree, the roots, they're just shriveling up. The green starts going away. There's nothing there. Well, if you go up on Stone Mountain, you'll see that there on that granite where the same thing happens on it when the rain hasn't been coming for a certain period of time, that those roots dry up. And that's what it's saying. And some fell, some uh, fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it out. You ever seen that where things will grow up and choke it out? You see weeds grow up and choke out the good grass? Or maybe there are certain uh, thorns and, and bushes and things that grow up around uh, certain things you may be growing. Maybe you spend a lot of money on a bush or a shrub or something and it's growing up around it and it's choking it out and choking all the life because they're taking uh, all the weeds, all the unwanted things, is taking up all the good nutrients uh, away from it. Uh, one of the good examples this week, we were teaching Annabelle how to go out and, and trim up and, and prune the monkey grass, and you're thinking, Brother Brad, are you kidding me? You're pruning monkey grass? <clears throat> During February, you're supposed to go and cut it down short and just leave it and blow the dead away. But because of the rain and because of the busyness of the meeting and because of everything that we had, just didn't have time, <laughs> you know. And we went out there when it dried up enough and we taught her how to get the dead out of that particular kind of monkey grass. And it's amazing, the second that we cut the dead off, the new just started springing up with blood. Brothers and sisters, isn't that the way it is for a child of grace making preparations in their life uh, that when we, hey, take off the old man and put on the new, there's some good things in there. We're making some preparation on in the ground and in, in the soil and making good, uh, good things to come about it. Now I want you to see this, verse 8. And other fell upon good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold, and when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Who's giving you ears, spiritual ears, to hear spiritual things? God's giving you spiritual ears to hear spiritual things. Who's giving you spiritual eyes to see some spiritual things? God's giving you those spiritual eyes to see the spiritual things. And, and how are you able to understand those things except God has blessed you by the work of the Holy Ghost that has quickened you uh, and blessed you with new life and, has, and you have been born again by the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's the work of God. Do you understand that? The fact that you uh, love God is because he first loved you. The fact that you desire and want to understand the things of God is evidence that God has done a work inside of you. You've been blessed with spiritual ears. So let's hear those things that are spiritual. Uh, hey, you've been blessed with ears. Let's hear. But if you don't use your ears, if you don't use your eyes and you want to be stubborn about it and you just close your eyes and you stop up your ears, you're not going to be able to grow much, are you? One of the best analogies I could give, give you is as that there in the uh, gold mines in, in Dahlonega, near where I live, 
It was about 30, uh, about 30 minutes north of where I live, not too far. But uh, there in those gold mines, you go down and, and, and listen to how the, they mine the gold up there. And you get down there and they'll shut the lights off on you. You can't see a thing. But you know who sees and knows everything is God. God sees you. You know, if somebody's standing out there in the main hallways of that mine, the main pathway, they have little finger type hallways that goes out and branches out from the main path. Now, if I, if somebody, if my son is out in one of those little paths out on the side, and I'm, I'm there at the main path, and they've turned out the lights, and I take my light, and I shine my light towards my son, and my son sees that light, uh, you see that, uh, he's always my son, even though he's in darkness. We being elect of God, you know, the Bible teaches that he foreknew you before the foundation of the world. He has called you out. Imagine me calling my son out and saying, hey, come on. But if him in his great stubbornness wants to sit there in the darkness and sit there and not come to the light, what has been shed on him, brothers and sisters, he's still my child, but he's in disobedience and he's rebellious. You see what I'm saying? He could cover his eyes up and not see the light. He could stop his ears up and not hear his daddy's voice. He could be in great rebellion. And there's consequences for that rebellion. The same way with a child of grace in the New Testament church, uh, when we have become ungrateful and unthankful for what God has blessed us to be able to have in the New Testament church and saved you by his marvelous grace. He's blessed you with great riches. Uh, he's blessed you and, and bestowed upon you great gifts. Uh, if we become ungrateful and unthankful for what he's blessed us to have, brothers and sisters, he can take those blessings away. He can allow you to be sitting in darkness and he allowed you to have stopped up ears that you think, hey, they don't work. You, it can allow you to not have that, be able to see the blessed things that you have been able to see spiritually. He can take that away from you if you don't use it. You've heard the saying, use it or lose it. You use your ability to be able to ride a bicycle or you, you lose it. Brother Bobby's a great example. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody close to the age that he is that has ridden a bicycle at that age. That's amazing. You know, but let's take the practical things of this life and exercise those things and use it to teach how we're to do spiritually also. Those things that God has blessed us with spiritually. <clears throat> Notice this. Verse 10. And he said unto you. It is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables. That seeing they might not see. And hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. You know, one that is not a child of grace is not under, is not going to understand the things of God. They just can't. <laughs> you know, they, they're spiritually discerning. Uh, they don't understand those things. They have no spiritual life in them. But a child of grace that has been born again by the Holy Ghost that has had new life put inside of them, that has a spiritual life, they're able to understand those spiritual things because they have spiritual life to understand those things. And you, and you are able to understand those. And that's what Jesus Christ is laying out beautifully. But verse 12, it says, Those by the wayside are they that hear... 
Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their mouths, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, you know, think about this. The gospel isn't the same those that are not children of God and make them children. The gospel is to save those that are spiritually saved. Amen. Those that have, have already had the work done inside of them that has spiritual life inside of them. Now, the thing with understanding scripture is context, context, and context. Elder, Elder uh, Sonny Piles was big on that context, context, and context. But you've got to understand this. In real estate, uh, it's the three L's. Location, location, location. And in, in this area, anybody who understand real estate should know location, location, location. You ever deal with anything in this area on, on real estate, you, you really understand location, location, location. But in the church... When we're understanding the word of God, we've got to understand the context, context, and the context. We have to rightly divide the word of truth. We have to get to that point where we say, hey, what is this talking about? Who's saying it? Uh, what kind of context is it? And, and break it down to be able to understand it thoroughly and rightly divide what's being said. That's why it says, lest they should believe and be saved. There may be some life there, and when they hear the word of God, they're able to hear it because they've got some spiritual ears to them. But, but guess what? The ground has not been prepared, has it? And the enemy comes in and, they want, and, and wants to take it out of their mouth. They, it doesn't want them talking dwelling upon the word of God, wants them to be cussing, uh, clamoring, wants them to be gossiping, doing everything else but living like a child of grace ought to be living and talking like a child of grace ought to be talking or, or, or focused on this thing. Hey, because the, the devil doesn't want you in the house of God, you're, the enemy does not want you there hearing the word of God, thinking upon the word of God, meditating upon that word, and growing. And, and you've heard me say it before. You wonder, you know, you hear older people say, well, um, I'm just too old to change. You hear young people say, I'm just too young. You hear middle age say, well, I just don't know what to do. You know, I, I'm tired. I'm, I'm getting up in age. I'm just tired of dealing with things. You know, well, guess what? Where do you find that in Scripture? The Bible doesn't teach that you're uh, too old to learn. The Bible doesn't teach that you're too young to learn. And the Bible doesn't teach that in middle ages, hey, they just dealt with enough and they've got too, uh, too much on their plate right now. They just can't deal with it. So when we're growing, you're going to have growing pains, whether you're young, whether you're middle-aged, whether you're old, and those growing pains. But if you just say, hey, I don't want to grow. I don't want to grow. I don't want to grow in maturity. I don't want to grow as a child of grace. I don't want to grow. And you just sit down like the person there in the cave and just stop your ears up, close your eyes, and you don't go towards the light, you don't grow. You don't get more light. You get more light the closer you get to the light. And the more that you see, because that light illuminates more things. Now, <clears throat> notice this. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And time of temptation fall away. If you don't think trials and temptations and hardships isn't going to come, think again. 
As a child of grace, you're going to have, and listen to what I'm saying, as a child of grace, you're going to have trials, tribulation, and hardships for his name's sake. And if you're a child of grace, living as a Christian, did you hear what I said there? Living as a Christian, a lot of people take and say, hey, a Christian means that you're a child of God. No, <clears throat> a Christian is a child of grace living after the things of God and trying to live Christ's life. That's what a Christian's about. Amen. One of the best sermons I ever heard on that was preached by Father Sonny Piles, uh, where he talked about that. Let me say this, that it's not based upon, hey, that I'm a child of God, so that just makes me a Christian, makes me a disciple. A disciple, a Christian, is one that follows after the things of God that is a child of grace. And one that is able, has prepared its ground, has removed the rocks and uh, and, and remove those things that is hindering it. Back at the Gulf Coast meeting, back last weekend, one of the uh, messages that was delivered, uh, Elder uh, Randall had gone down there to that meeting and he was talking about a lesson that his father, Edward Cable, had delivered unto him. And he was saying this that his father had said, and Edward was the father in the ministry to me, I loved him dearly, but I thought about this. And the lesson was this, that he was growing oats and it had grown to a certain degree. And then as winter came on and the cold months came on, it just stopped, it halted its growth. You didn't see any more growth to it. He just, it just halted. And he told his daddy, he said, Daddy, he said, it's not growing. There's no more growth to this. It's just dying. What is wrong with it? It's no good. He said, son, it is growing. It's not where you could see the growth. It's growing deep. And it's growing deep roots. And, and, and those uh, oaks is growing deep roots into the ground, into the soil, so that it can take root. And then when it gets warmer, he said, then you'll start seeing growth. He said, sure enough, he said, the temperature started getting warmer in February and in March, and it started growing. It needed the deep roots. And then as it grows up, you see, those roots is there to be able to sustain the growth. Now, brothers and sisters, have you prepared your ground? Have you prepared yourself to receive the word of God? Have you prepared yourself in a way, uh, spiritually, uh, in your life, that you're able to hear the word of God, take it in, and grow by it, brothers and sisters? What are you we're going to get to a point where it feels like, hey, you don't see much in your life uh, growing like you think you need to grow. But those are the times when you hit the hardships and those are the times when you hit the trials uh, that there's times that you grow deep root. Uh, now, listen here. It's not based upon we think how we think we need to grow. It's based upon the Word of God, how the Word of God teaches us to grow. <coughs> You see, we need the deep roots in the Lord, and we need to prepare our ground in such a way that we can grow deep roots. And so that when God's timing, not ours, and God's timing, you remember there in Psalms chapter 1, when it talks about and it bringeth forth its fruit in its season. You remember that? Psalms chapter 1. <clears throat> You know, as a child of grace, you'll bring forth your fruit in your, its season. We don't necessarily know the things the Lord knows that we don't, you see. But if we're not making preparations uh, in our lives to grow in spirit and in truth and seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then those things that is delivered unto us, we're not able to grow, are we? 
And those things that we hear and we take it and think upon it and meditate upon it and, and grow in, the, in, in knowledge of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. You remember the word of the Lord tells us, but grow and grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're to grow in grace. God's giving you, he has saved you by his marvelous grace. He has given you everything that you cannot work for. You cannot do anything to obtain that. There's nothing you can do. It, that's why it's called grace. You didn't deserve it. It was given to you freely. God did it because he knew you intimately. He loved you intimately. He loved you in such a way he bestowed his own graces and he chose you out. And thanks be to God, the children of God is, is the number of the sand of the sea. That's a numerous number, isn't it? That's greater than any so-called preacher out there and so-called denomination could save, isn't it? That's a great number. Praise God, we're saved and we believe in being saved by the grace of God and the grace of God alone. Amen. We're able to rejoice when we see forth the fruit of the Spirit, which we realized that over in Galatians chapter 5 where it talks out and talks about the fruit of the Spirit and lists each one of the characteristics. It doesn't say fruits is in plural. The fruit of the Spirit, a fruit has many characteristics. What's listed in Galatians chapter 5 is the characteristics of that fruit. Ain't that awesome? And you see the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, you're able to see the fruit of, of the Spirit that dwells within inside a child of grace. You may see the fruit of the Spirit in a child of grace out there on the road, and, and guess what? They live in an ungodly life, but guess what? You may have seen a, the fruit of the Spirit in them. Goes right back to this portion of Scripture we're talking about. Did they prepare their ground to receive the truth. Have they made preparations to receive the truth when they hear the truth? When they hear the gospel? When the, the truth is shared with them, have they received it gladly? Have they made preparations in their lives? And, some, and I know some people have differences on this, but I think this is beautifully, clearly laid out for us to understand. Now notice this. <clears throat> when it said there, they on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root. So in that, that Elder Edward Cagle taught in that lesson, which is natural with his own oats that he was growing. Think about that. If we need roots, to be able to sustain the growth that is above, that we need to dig down deep. We need to make preparations for it to grow. And there's going to be times where it feels like that you don't see much up top, right? And you're going to be growing in the Lord. Now, when you grow in the Lord, it's not necessarily going to be the way that you think you need to grow. Remember that. And your timing uh, is not God's timing. God's timing is God's timing. Verse 14, And that which fell among the thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Now, you know, anything in this life isn't perfect. The only perfect thing in this life is Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, you remember uh, that there in Job that it talked about that he was a perfect and upright. <clears throat> he was perfect and upright. Now notice that Job, if you read Job, you'll find out he was not perfect and fully upright. So why was it saying that he was perfect and upright? This is where rightly dividing the word of truth that comes the context is because of that that was inside of him, the spiritual life that was inside of him, him being a child of grace, 
because he sought the things of God. Brothers and sisters, he sought and desired after the things of God. That's what was perfect and not right about him because of what was inside of him. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. Uh, you remember those old vultures that came in on the him, uh, so-called friends of his, uh, that came and said, Job, if you just do this, this, and this, hey, uh, then this will happen. And, and they said, hey, Job, you did this. This is why all this is coming down upon you. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. These are trials that you go through in this life. There's going to be trials. Uh, there's going to be those that so-called religious people out there that has the so-called truth. Uh, did you hear what I said? So-called truth. Uh, they don't have the truth. Uh, they may seem like they've got the truth, but they don't have the truth. Uh, but brothers and sisters, you might find an old Baptist preacher uh, that holds to the uh, sound doctrine and the practices of the New Testament church and is there trying to encourage uh, that child of grace to continue in the way and to give them scripture and help encourage them in the time of need. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. You've got a point in your life that you feel like, hey, I can't handle it anymore uh, because guess what? I'm not getting rich being a child of grace uh, because uh, I'm going to church on Sundays and I'm not able to, uh, uh, or, or whenever I can, uh, uh, to the best of my ability. And, and these people don't want me going to church. Uh, my boss don't want me to in church because guess what? I'm able to make more money not going, not proclaiming God, not saying that I'm a Christian, not being what you need to be. <clears throat> you remember that old saying, be all that you can be for the army. Well, be all that you can be for a child of grace. Amen. God's blessed you. Be all that you can be as a child of grace. Be thankful. The Bible doesn't teach us great riches being a child of grace. The Bible teaches us great blessings and riches that, hey, malt and rust does not corrupt. You're a, you remember the parable of the one that had the great treasure in the field? <clears throat> Sorry. There was a great treasure in the field, and he sold all his possessions to purchase that field with that great treasure in it. Is that the church for you? Is that the truth for, uh, for you? I hope it is, because that's what that's about. You give up all the great riches and the great fame of this life and, and all that you have of this life to be in the house of God and to worship in spirit and in truth. Are you thankful for what God's blessed you to have to a point that you, Lord, thank you. Are you over murmuring and complaining because it's not going your way? Because God can, you know, God can take his blessings and place it elsewhere. He can remove the candlestick. He doesn't have to keep these many little old Baptist churches. He took the blessing from the Israelites and gave it to the Gentiles. You know that? You find that over in Romans. You find where he took away and cut them off. Doesn't mean that the Israelites was no longer children of grace. And I'm talking spiritual Israel that was among the Israelites. But he had blessed them with the truth at that day and time in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament time, because the Israelites were so ungrateful and unthankful for what God had blessed them to have and did not seek after the face of God as they ought to be, God cut them off and he took his blessings and he blessed the Gentiles with the church and the New Testament times. Well, how are you going to be as a child of grace? Are you going to prepare your ground and receive what God has blessed you and be thankful for it and be thankful for the blessings he's bestowed upon you as a child of grace and that has the truth. Are you going to be ungrateful and unthankful? And are you going to be one of those that, hey, <clears throat> go back under perdition? And the Lord remove his blessings 
and take it elsewhere because he can put his blessings elsewhere. He doesn't have to keep it here. I've been thankful for what God's blessed us to see here at Oak Grove in the time that I've been here, and I'm, I'm very thankful. I think there has been more miracles I've seen work in this church than I've ever seen in the years of my ministry. I've, I've just been amazed. Absolutely breathtaking. The fact that somebody, just like what we've just had, somebody wants to do work just out of the blue, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Not many people do that. Verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Did you hear that? With patience. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, Keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Waiting for God's time. Waiting for the Lord. You know, one of the biggest problems we've got in our country today, you've heard of uh, uh, GMOs, genetically modified food organisms, you know, they're always trying to bring forth great production out there on the farmlands, and it's made people money, you know. But there's also been studies made where it's also not as healthy. And people started buying non-GMOs and, and started to do different things to be healthier because it takes more time. You have to have some patience with that growth, too. But also, there comes a time when the Lord, you know, when the Lord said uh, there in the word of the Lord, when it talks about as babes desiring milk, uh, and also when it gets down into a portion where it talks about when they are of age and it's time for them to eat meat, that, hey, they're having to go back to the milk of the word the very foundational things because they're not able to handle the meat, yet they're of age. In other words, you get to a point in time as a, as a child grows, if the parent doesn't teach them, and if the parent has taught them, but if the, if the child desires milk and is constantly wanting milk, what if they get up to 10 years old, 4 years old, and still wanting the milk and not wanting to eat meat? I'd be concerned if my child wasn't eating meat at five. But you see my point, when people get to a certain age and they're over here sitting in a restaurant and you see them on a bottle, you're gonna be, you're gonna be real concerned, aren't you? But you see somebody eating meat that is of age, you're not gonna be concerned because you're gonna say, hey, that's a proper age child eating a steak, uh, you know? But you see them drinking a bottle, I guarantee you everybody in that place is going to be staring at that person because that's just out of sorts. And the same way with the child of grace that God is blessed in maturity and blessed to get to a certain place in their maturity and blessed to grow in the grace and knowledge of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and bless them richly uh, get to that point, and then all of a sudden, a child of grace says, hey, I can't handle this. What happens? Well, guess what? That's the way it is in this life for a child of grace. A lot of times, are like in that verse 14, they fell among thorns. They have heard. They go forth. They're choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. It's, the fruit hasn't been brought forth in full maturity, in other words. I don't know if you've been around things that grow. You can have things and make preparations 
but also you also have to do some upkeep in those fields. You have to keep the weeds out. You have to make sure that things is done to care for the fields or whatever's growing, the orchards. You have to keep things off of it. If you don't, the you know, it's going to choke off the life and the nutrients that it gets. Same way with these apple trees sometimes in these orchards. When they're growing, <clears throat> And you may have made great preparation beforehand, <clears throat> but you don't upkeep. And the fruit isn't brought forth to perfection, in other words, full maturity. And, and that fruit is shriveled up, or it may be smaller than it ought to be, and something ain't just right. Well, that's the way we can be, brothers and sisters. That's the way we can be. We can be choked out with the cares of this life. And if we become like that, the Lord can take his blessings and take it elsewhere, just as he did the children of Israel. May God help us. May God bless us that we do that which is right in the eyes of God and seek God's face and not that of our own. And have the right mindset and understand what it is like to be a child of grace, growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a blessing that we have been bestowed. Our elder brother, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. has done great things unto us, has blessed us far beyond what we ever deserve and done a work that we don't deserve. May we not forget it. May we not forget it. And may we be thankful for what's been bestowed upon us. Because guess what? It, it did come free. It was freely given to us, but guess what? Our Lord and Savior offered his own life up upon the cross of Calvary for our sakes. And he paid the price that had to be paid for our sakes. And it wasn't anything that we asked him to do, but he did it willingly because he knew that he was the only one that could do it for us because God the Father loved us that much that he gave up his only begotten son Jesus Christ for our sakes thank you for your time and kind sweet attention Amen